So let's do box counting for the Cantor set, like you did in the last quiz. So here are the steps in the construction of the Cantor set. And here is a somewhat enlarged version of the, that last step. And so we want to know how many boxes of side a third it takes to cover the shape. So this length is a uh, length of one. And so this is a third and that's a third. So I can draw on, let's see here. So there are um, three boxes with side a third. Obviously not a perfect drawing, but the idea is it should be clear. And it takes one, two of those boxes. This box isn't needed these two, and the shape is covered. Okay. Let's now do a ninth. Get a different color. So now if I do squares of side a ninth, that's a third of a third. So how many of those do I need? Well, one, two, three, four. And if I just use these four squares, the shape is covered. So it's four. And a similar argument. Um, I won't draw it out because it'll get too messy. 27th, I do a third of a third. You can see there's going to be, uh, sorry, 27th, a third of a ninth, that there'll be eight needed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So then the question is, what does this tell us about the dimension? Well, so let's use this data to calculate the dimension, the box counting dimension. And that's given by this relationship. And we want to know D. So let's plug in maybe this first row. 2 is 1 over a third to the d, which simplifies to 2 equals 3 to the d. And this equation, we've worked with it before. If we take the log of both sides and solve for d, we get d is log 2 over log 3. And let's see what that is. 2 log divided by 3 log is approximately 0 0.63. So that's the same thing we found for the self-similarity dimension. And um, that's not a surprise. The box counting and self-similarity dimensions, when they both can be applied, um, will give the same answer. So that's one more example of using the box counting dimension for a regular fractal.